Uh, good day, everyone. Uh, my name is John Sherva. I'm the deputy sports editor here at the Los Angeles Times. Happy Thanksgiving week. Uh, we've moved our NBA show from Wednesday to Tuesday, just this week only, because uh, it's kind of a compressed week. We're actually uh, going to go dark from the hangouts on Thursday and Friday, uh, since you all will be watching uh, football on TV and maybe some basketball at night. But today we have got live from Oklahoma City, Brad Turner, wow. our Clipper beat writer, who's uh, <laughs> racking up Marriott points as we speak. And from uh, Redondo Beach, from Manhattan Beach, we've got uh, Mike Bresnahan, our Laker beat writer. So I know we always start with the Lakers, but I'm, I'm thinking these Clippers are something special. They, they have the best record tied with Memphis um, in the West. They just beat San Antonio for the second straight time this year. Uh, Brad, what's going on with those guys? Well, first off, it's about time we start with the Lakers and not Mike Bresahan, okay? <laughs> Let's just get that straight. You know, I was looking at some stats, and amazingly enough, the Clippers are playing really good defense right now. I mean, I'm surprised at how well they are playing on defense. They're active. They have shot blockers and DJ and Blake Griffin. They have guys like Chris Paul that can get steals. Eric Bledsoe that's really tough defensively. So for them, it's starting on defense, and they have weapons on offense like you wouldn't believe. They can score on anyone at any time. So they're playing a great overall game right now. So, uh, and they don't even have all their players yet. They don't have uh, Chauncey or, or, uh, or Grant Hill. Wow. Are they to the point where getting those two veterans into the lineup could disrupt what's a pretty good thing going? You know, I'm not sure, just yet. I don't think so, only because when Chauncey comes back and he's expected back first, he would move into the starting lineup. So that could have a little disruption there. Willie Green would then go to the bench, but he will, Willie Green will, will end up being the fifth guard on the team. So the bench remains intact. The reserves stay intact. Now, when Grant comes back, we don't know when that'll be. That might not be until December sometime. That could shift the focus some, but right away, I don't think it will. I mean, I just think that Chauncey knows what his role will be, which is to shoot, which is what Jamal Crawford does a lot of anyway. So they just interchange their parts. So uh, Benny has his hands full, but, you know, that's what he's getting paid the big bucks for. Like Mike Bresenhan gets paid the big bucks. Yeah, I'll, I'll let you know when that happens. <laughs> let us know right now then, Mike. Come on. <laughs> it hasn't happened. <laughs> well, let's switch, let's switch over to the Lakers for a minute. Uh, we're all breathlessly waiting for uh, D'Antoni's debut as coach, or has he really already taken over the team uh, through practice and the change in the offense? Yeah, you know, you just sense so, such freedom out there in this offense. Uh, definitely different from the Princeton offense of the last uh, month or so. Fans are not uh, falling asleep in the second quarter. Uh, journalists are not falling asleep in the first quarter. You know, just the subtle nuances of, of this new, uh, what this new offense is doing uh, to people who watch Laker games. And, uh, you know, they give up a lot of points, but they also score a lot of points. It's obvious this is going to be a very D'Antoni-esque team. Uh, they're going to they're win games 111 to 104 and be happy with it. And this is what the Bus family uh, wanted, teams that score a lot of points and make it exciting. And, the big question will be in April, May, and June if they can win in the playoffs. But for now, hey, everyone's happy. Princeton's out of here. We have this new fun offense. We're scoring 110 every game. Well, um, how will the crowd react to D'Antoni? Are, are they over Phil? Are those just those few wins in a row? Are they over Phil Jackson? Yeah, there's a little bit of hesitation, I would guess, for a couple reasons. Um, first of all, they're, they're kind of upset they're not getting the free taco promotion which is the Lakers have to win and hold the opponent under 100. That is not going to happen probably the rest of the season, unless they play the Clippers or some sad team like that. Right, Brad Turner? And, and Yeah, it'd be Clippers all day long. Tacos, free Clippers, tacos. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, so, so fans are a little upset about that. They actually booed the other night. The Lakers are winning by, I think, 16 at the time in the fourth quarter when Houston broke 100 with a few minutes left. People booed. It's like, come on, you know, they, they're, not, they're not happy with beating a team by six. Let me, let me get this play. straight. These fans are paying two grand for tickets and they want free tacos? <laughs> they Please. Want their, they want their two free tacos for, you know, <laughs> worth a dollar. What's going on over there in Lakeland? <laughs> so, so you have a little bit of taco angst. And people, you know, I think they also realize that the, the Lakers have beaten two opponents uh, since, since they hired Dan Tony. 
They beat Houston, which was four and five, and they beat Phoenix, which I think was also four and five. Tonight's opponent, Brooklyn, six and two, but hey, it's still Brooklyn, kind of the Clippers of the East, if you will, Brad. Ooh, <laughs> winners, what you mean? Winning record? That's, I get you, I get it. <laughs> and, and, and nobody really knows. No one really respects them, to be honest. Uh, and again, the big game, the big games will be. They play Sacramento Wednesday on the road. Much bigger, Memphis and Dallas back to back on the road this weekend, Friday and Saturday. Laker fan, just waiting to see how this offense does against real teams. Hey John, what is? Let's ask Mike. What is your coach's name? Is it Mike? Is it Mike D'Antone? D'Antoni? <laughs> I mean, it changes every week. What is the guy's last name? Drop the apostrophe. It's Dan Tony. That's all I need to know. Dan Tony. Okay, excuse me, Dan Tony. I, I like his brother, the assistant coach Dan Dan Tony. My favorite name ever. <laughs> it looks like I went away. Yeah, uh -oh. you're big. There are two people there. Okay. <laughs> Well, we love technology. So I don't know, were you guys still talking while I disappeared? Well, uh, we were. Yeah. As we, usual. He was, he was explaining me the name of his coach, his last name. He's had five last names in the last two weeks, so I'm just trying to get it straight. Yeah, it's it's Dan Tony. In case Dan Tony. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, so we were talking about the Lakers and no defense. But isn't it sort of conventional wisdom that once you are in the playoffs, defense uh, has to be played? Yeah, that, that's the problem. I mean, the knock on D'Antoni is his teams are fun, they're entertaining, they're not real physical, and they don't win in the playoffs. And we just won't know until late April, the whole month of May, and partway into June, if the Lakers are lucky enough to, to go all the way to the finals, how the, this, this offense can do in a, in a substantially more half-court half game. My personal prediction is it's going to be fine. You have two very good post players, Pal Gasol and Dwight Howard. So I don't see any problems really in the playoffs if teams want to slow this team down. Plus the Lakers, their average age of their starters is like 47. So fine, slow it down. Uh, I don't think it'll be a big deal, but we'll see in a few months. Okay. Let's uh, switching back over to the uh, to the Clippers. Um, is there a chance they're peaking too early, or that, that when will they actually be playing their best basketball? Could it be right now? It's a very good question. I mean, they're playing great basketball right now. I mean, their goal when this when we started this week and they've been going on the road, they wanted to go undefeated, and I, I didn't think that was possible. I thought they would lose at San Antonio. I was wrong about that, and I'm not sure how they're going to play against OKC because they did win that season series last year, 3-1. to one. So that gives them a good chance because other than the Lakers, they actually match up athletically very well with the Thunder. They don't have a bunch of 45, 50-year-old guys on their team. They have some young athletic guys like DeAndre Jordan, who's on Mike Bresenhan's fantasy team, but never plays a guy for some reason. He's terrible you know, this year. He's oh, yes. Yeah, so, he's, he's having, you know, 10 points a game. But what does Bezzard handle? He's, on, he's our Laker guy. What a Laker guy is nobody. Chris Kamen is a much better fantasy player than him. The Clippers never should have let him go. Yeah, the same guy that's played about, what, three games this year? <laughs> right, at least the Clippers guys played in all their games, Mike Bresson. Oh, very, very durable. Chauncey, Grant Hill. Okay, I'll, I'll stop right there. And they're still winning games without two substantial players on that team. Think about that. That's true. You, you guys are – wait a minute. Are the two Steves playing for the Lakers? Uh, Steve Nash, no. Steve Blake shot around a little bit yesterday. He's kind of on the fence for tonight's game uh -huh. against Brooklyn. But, hey, Kobe Bryant, you might have heard of him, BT. He wears number 24 for the Lakers. He got, he, got a, he got a triple double the other night, a shooting guard playing point guard. I, I think he can handle the point guard duties tonight. Uh, wow. If, if, need I, if I recall quicker, that's his 18th in 18 years. I mean, come on. What? So he's having <laughs> one a year. Chris Paul can start in a month. Come on, man. What are you talking about here? Please. That's good math, BT. That's good math. Did, did John help you with that? Did he Did he send that to you on, on Instant Messenger? We, we multiplied the body, and it worked out just fine for us. <laughs> Now uh, let's uh, again let's, let's talk Lakers for a second. Are the is the Bus family mad at Magic Johnson, or should they be? You know I think they're fine with him. Um, you know Magic's been pretty active on Twitter. He's done a couple interviews saying, hey, you know I, I I wanted Phil Jackson, and the buses were very interested in Phil too. This isn't like Magic was pushing up, uh, God, you know Rudy Tomjanovich. Or uh, you know someone uh, further in the past who just didn't work that well as a Laker coach. Uh, there's nothing wrong with Phil Jackson. I, I think the buses are, are okay with him, to be honest. 
uh, as you know, as long as he's espousing uh, Phil Jackson. And by the way, Magic on Twitter yesterday said that wow, this offense is pretty good. So maybe he's turning the tide just a little bit. Or do you think he just wanted his group to have showtime and nobody else, or is that just overthinking it? <laughs> you know, interesting. Uh, I, I think he's, you know, some of these guys, I, I always wonder about that. If someone were to break my eight-man football receiving record at Buckley High School in Sherman Oaks, I'd be disappointed. But publicly, I have to say, hey, this is great. Congratulations. Uh, but, you know, I, I've always wondered what, it's, what athletes really think on the inside if, uh, if the records are broken or if their offense is uh, outdone. Uh, I, I don't know. I, th I, I don't think that came across Magic's mind, but I could see it. I could see it. Newsflash, Michael. Your record was, was broken every month at Buckley High School, okay? <laughs> All-time career receptions leader, Buckley oh, High School. Yeah, yeah, yeah with, with five catches for the season. That's what he got. <laughs> so uh, we get games tonight and tomorrow. Um, uh, Mike, how will the Lakers do against, I, I want to say New Jersey, but against Brooklyn, the Brooklyn Nets, the team that Dwight Howard wanted to go to when he was in Orlando? Yeah, the Lakers, you know, they won four in a row. They're playing really free and easy. I, I don't see how they lose a home game to uh, – to, to Brooklyn tonight, I, I just don't see it. Uh, you know, like I mentioned a few minutes ago, th then they have three road games and four nights. A young Sacramento team that always kinds of, kind of gives the Lakers trouble. They're fast, they're, they're scrappy. That could be a problem spot. Memphis on Friday, I'm not sure how the Lakers win that unless uh, Steve Nash miraculously comes back. And then the very next night at Dallas, the same team that beat the Lakers at home in their home opener uh, a month ago almost. So. I think uh, the Lakers have a tough, uh, you know, they actually have four games and five nights. Sounds like they'll go about two and two would be my prediction. Maybe three and one if they uh, get lucky in Memphis. Now, will this be your first trip ever to Sacramento, or are you, are you taking that game off? <laughs> yes. Good, great question, John. Great question. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> feeling a little cold coming on. Just get some Vicks Vapor Rub or something. I, uh I might have to sit that one out. That that in Salt Lake City and, and Oklahoma City, I, you know, I always get a little flu right before those games. <laughs> okay. And uh, Brad, Oklahoma City tomorrow night against the Clippers. A, I don't know if a game this early in the season can be meaningful, but it it certainly will be interesting. You know what? It will be. And I thought Mike said the Lakers won four in a row. Well, the Clippers have won six in a row, Mike. <laughs> As a hand, I'll have you know. And uh, more, more, more tough math. Congratulations. Well, you know, I, I can count. One, two, three, four, <laughs> five, six. Now, it's going to be a tough game against OKC for the Clippers. But keep in mind, the Clippers beat them three out of four last year. And they won a game here, obviously, to do that. So they believe that they can beat this Thunder team. They believe they had the athletes. But most importantly, the Clippers believe that because of their bench, it always gives them a chance to win games. And that's been the case all season long. You know, I like their chances. But I'm willing. To, I, I kind of think that this would be a game that they may lose, but they end up going three and one on the trip anyway because they're just that good. And we do need to point out last week that uh, Brad did pick uh, the Clippers beating Miami. Um, wow! You nailed that one. Yes, wow, I did, homer. baby! Don't forget about that, Mike Brezahan. What a homer! <laughs> That's right, <laughs> uh, Brad. Uh, outside of Chris Paul, who's the most important player? Uh, for the Clippers to define their six-game success? Wow. Interesting. Interesting question. I would probably say Jamal Crawford because he leads the team in scoring, and even when he's not making basket like he wasn't last night, he was difficult. He had a hard time scoring in basketball. He's such a threat at all times from anywhere on the court. I mean, like Mike Bresenhan, the guy would shoot from half court if he has to. He just throws it out there. But he was struggling with his shot last night. Late in the game, he still drove to the basket and had made a layup, put them back up four points. So he's like Kobe Bryant. You can't make him if you don't shoot him. And Jamal Crawford will shoot the ball until it goes in, and he's had a lot of success this year. And because he can handle the ball so, so well, it means Chris Paul can move off of the basketball, and so now teams can't double-team him as, as easily. Okay, uh, let's. So we have a request from one of our uh, one of our uh, viewers. Uh, Kareem had the statue unveiled. Um, or was it late last week? Early this week? I forget. Late, uh, last week. Last Friday. Yeah. Last Friday. Um, 
Do you guys have a Kareem story? You've both been around uh, the NBA for a while, uh, Brad a little bit longer than Mike. Um, do you have a Kareem story that you'd like to share with us? Well, I think you just called me old or something. You said longer than Mike. <laughs> hey, Kareem. Oh, you are. Yeah, you know, <laughs> probably my favorite still has to be Magic's rookie year. They win a game in San Diego. It's one of 82 games. Kareem makes a sky hook to beat the Clippers. Mike Rutherford on top of that at that old antiquated ugly sports arena. Oof. And what is Magic? What is, he runs up and gives Kareem this big bear hug and won't let him go. And the look of Kareem face was like, kid, kid, first off, get off me. <laughs> Second off, it's only one game. Third, again, get off of me. Please get off of me and just don't kiss me. Please, don't do that. <laughs> so that's the one game that I recall because it seemed like it, um, it set the Lakers on their way. They won the championship that year, and it just showed what kind of person Magic was. And it also showed us that Kareem was so coming out of his shell somewhat because now he was more, more excited about winning games. He was not as aloof, although he remained an aloof player you know, throughout his career. But it was something that I – as a, a young guy growing up watching those games, Mike was a young guy. You know, it's kind of fun to watch that transaction between Magic and Kareem. Uh, my, my story isn't nearly as, as exciting and, and huggy as yours, but uh, you know, Kareem was, was uh, a Laker assistant coach, part-time assistant coach, for about five years when Andrew Bynum was on the team. And uh, I, I would talk to Kareem a couple times a year, but uh, never really quite knew uh, if he you know, really – knew who I was. He, Kareem was a, a man of few words. And then one day I'm walking down the Laker locker hall, locker room hall, which is very thin. And uh, I walk by him and, and he says to me, hey, Brez. I was like, oh, I, I guess Kareem knows who I am because he's one of those guys, just a man of very few words. You don't know what he's thinking, but hey, he called me Brez, which was uh, surprising. Uh, hey, it, it was a few words. Hey and Brez. <laughs> <laughs> did not change character, did he? No, no not at all. <laughs> So, uh, okay, well, I think we're about out of time. Um, I don't know, any final thoughts from, um, from the Lakers, what we can expect in the next uh, week and a day before we meet again, Mike? Yeah, I, I, th I really think we'll find out soon if this, um, if this offense is, is really built for, uh, for some good teams. Again, Houston, Phoenix, not really a, a good, uh, a good uh, parameter, so to speak, to, to figure out what this team can do. Uh, Mike D'Antoni might coach tonight. They're just finishing up a uh, shoot-around right about now, so might have a little more info on that uh, soon coming from the Lakers. But, uh, you know, they just need to get people healthy. Mike D'Antoni has got to get healthy. Steve Nash has to get healthy. You know, I remember, uh, God, almost three weeks ago I wrote, this guy might be out uh, up to four weeks. And the Lakers were kind of like, oh, that sounds kind of long. Other journalists uh, kind of lampooned me because the Lakers were only saying minimum of one week at that point. Steve Nash is getting closer and closer to four weeks. They need him back pretty soon. And his backup, Steve Blake, they need him back as well, just for depth purposes. they got to get healthy and, and win games against uh, good teams. BT? Well, you know, you were asking me about if the Clippers are peaking too soon. And the one thing I can't appreciate about the team right now is that they are playing really good defense. You know, and if they continue to play good defense, which was a struggle last season, if they can keep doing that, then that gives them a chance to become an even better team as the season progresses. You know, so I'll be curious to see, you know, what this team is like in January and February and March when those are the dog days of the season. Can they still put the game winning streaks of five and six games in a row? Will they still be a happy, jovial, fun team cracking jokes? Or, or who will be the first person to get on someone's nerves? Like, Bethlehem gets on my nerves all the time. <laughs> I mean, so I'm wondering about how that chemistry maintains, if it can maintain. So far, it's been great. My last thing is I wonder about Mike Bresenhan's fantasy team. I mean, this awful team he has doesn't play DeAndre Jordan. The guy goes back-to-back 20-point -back games. I mean, he's our NBA writer on the Lakers. I feel for those fans. Yeah, I think, I think Plaschke is even ahead of me in the standings right now, which is really saying something. And it's not saying something good, that's for sure. I agree with that. No, nope, not at all. Well, I think that does it for today. We will be back next week uh, on Wednesday with our, our, our usual uh, usual NBA talk. Uh, tomorrow, uh, Wednesday, we have college football with um, 
with uh, uh, Gary Klein, Chris Dufresne, and Chris Foster talking a little bit about the USC UCLA game, but looking forward to the USC Notre Dame game. I got to say that this uh, Max Wittick is a pretty interesting character and uh, may uh, have a lot to say about the outcome on Saturday. And also UCLA's uh, conundrum of of uh, do they lose to Stanford so they can play them again, or do they beat Stanford then only have to face Oregon? So we'll talk about that tomorrow. So uh, until then. Um, I think that's it. For those of you who won't be checking in tomorrow, have a happy Thanksgiving, and we'll see you soon.